the Realty Debate. I'm Manisha Natrajan. And our question today is, is the time ripe for a design shift in India's housing sector? In a rapidly changing world of wearable technology, driverless cars and sustainable solutions, is the Indian real estate industry doing enough to make India's homes future ready? Well, we all know how political structures are absolutely incapable of responding to the many challenges that society faces. So should the lead to develop better, healthy and sustainable life, living and homes be taken by developers? Joining me today are Niranjan Hiranandani, co-founder and chairman Hiranandani Group, Pranav Ansel, vice chairman Ansel API, Nitin Kilawala, practicing architect and director, Group 7 Architects and Planners, joins us from the Mumbai studio. Here with me in the Delhi studio, I have Manit Rastogi, managing partner, Morphogenesis. And uh, also with me in the Delhi studio, Tanmay Tathagat, Director, Environmental Design Solutions. We'll also be joined by Sudhir Vora, Principal Architect, Sudhir Vora Consultants and Urban Planner and Urban Law Expert. So we've got a really, really power-packed panel here. So before I start the discussion, let's just look at what our lives today are or what they're subjected to in urban India. Now, the number of people with non-communicable diseases is growing exponentially because of lifestyle changes and response to the rapidly changing environment. Now, heart diseases, what's happened, have increased from about 17% to 35% amongst corporate executives in the past decade. That's a twofold rise, doubling of it. Despite rising awareness, more than half of the men in major cities like Delhi, Mumbai, Ahmedabad and Chennai suffer from diabetes. 42% of working women suffer, suffer from lifestyle diseases like backache, obesity, depression, diabetes, etc., etc. Now, this is a study done by Metropolis Healthcare and Asocham. Now, is, uh, we all know that uh, there are scary levels of pollution in most of India's cities. And here's food for thought. According to the recent WHO study of the world's top 20 polluted such cities, 13 are in India compared to just three in China. And we thought China was polluting so much. Air pollution slashes life expectancy by three and a half years for, of course, all the Indians. 660 million is the number who live in, uh, in cities. Now, six lakh deaths occur annually just by or can be attributed to air pollution, asthma, etc. Now, the question that we are asking is, what can be done better? We have shrinking city spaces, lack of public grounds. So where does the onus really rest to provide a well-balanced environment? So Manit, start with it. I mean, you're the big voice of sustainability. So tell us, who should take responsibility for it? We all should. I mean, there is no question about that. But first, before I go there, uh, on the issue of space, mm -hmm. right? A simple statistic, if you take the landmass of India and you take the billion people that we are, and that's sort of roughly say 200, 250 million families, and you give each person a 200 square yard plot of land and all the social infrastructure, multiply that by three, mm -hmm. you only need about 9% of the landmass of India to give everyone that level of accommodation. So land is not a paucity. Okay. Water is not a paucity. Energy, solar energy alone, we only need 0.01% of the land mass of India to generate all our energy needs. Mm -hmm. That is not a paucity. So what is the real issue? The real issue lies in the fact that we do not understand the equitable distribution of resources. Okay. We do not understand what is the carrying capacity of a place. Mm -hmm. We do not understand when it uh, simple issues of democracy and equity when it comes to public space. Okay. So, models of urbanization in India, and I will keep our argument to cities, urbanization in India have been based and evolved around master plans. What does that do? Land is allocated to people which they own, they put boundary walls around them. Mm -hmm. The only public space that is really left between these parcels of land are the roads which are the true democratic spaces of the city. And there we don't have any pavements for people to walk in. The true models that you will get where you will start approaching sustainable living is if you abandon the master plan model mm -hmm. and move to an urban design model where the developer or the owner only owns the plot immediately under their building mm -hmm. and the horizontal plane of the city is opened up to the people. Oh my God, it wow, is, what a, what, a, okay, let's, Bunny, just stop there. This is, this is such an interesting opener to this entire dialogue. I'll abandon the master plan. Nitin Kilawala, come in here, tell us. Abandon the master plan. Everyone, the ownership should be just for the land under their feet and rest of it should be open to public spaces. What do you feel about it? Yeah, I think uh, I fully agree with uh, what uh, Manjit say, says. And uh, 
you know, all our cities are going towards huge disparities. Mm -hmm. And this is something which we need to curb. And here, the political will also comes into picture. And you don't see housing in isolation or residence in isolation. It is also connected with some very, very basic infrastructure. To start with mobility, the, the transport, the roads. All our roads are full of potholes. That also creates some kind of, uh, you know, uh, 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 it's a carrying some very uh, basic uh, insanitary conditions. And uh, th th these are something which is very, very basic. And uh, uh, yes, I think we, we must have equitable uh, land for all sections of the society. And it is there. When, when we talk of, say, a place like Mumbai, we, we have abundant land in, in public domain. So, so why this cannot be used up uh, in, in, in a more uh, uh, selective manner? Let's hold, hold that thought. Sudhir Vora, equitable land for all sections of the society. Currently, even if you had to house everybody in India and assume that you need 250 uh, square feet for each human being, only 9% of India's land would be taken up. I mean, this is these numbers are just astounding. So what's going wrong? We have terrible common living spaces. And yes, there are isolated cases of great community living and some township projects, but then they're so isolated that I can't even say that those, the, the ones who are considered as having it all are living a great life either in this country. Well, I think Manith has opened the, the debate as a good opening batsman. And uh, I think the crux of the issue is that our planning processes are still top downwards, top downwards approach. We, uh, the last 50, 60 years, starting with the DDA, which was the first town planning organization created under an act of parliament in 56, we have assumed that whatever government gives us is going to be the best. Now, that's something which has happened in other industries as well. At one time, you didn't have a choice but to buy either a Fiat or an ambassador, and you didn't have a choice in automobiles or in your telecommunication or many other areas. The same thing practically is happening now with housing. You, and that's what also has happened the last 20, 30 years after we opened the housing uh, industry to the private developers. You assume that what you give to the public is what they want, what they need, and it's backfired. It's a, it's a, so we haven't yet democratized our planning processes, and land is still assumed to be a, a, a rare resource, which it really is not. It's a mismanaged resource. And, this, and we have similar examples of mismanagement in both in other areas, energy, water, etc. For instance, Delhi uses the same amount of water per capita that, that Paris does. And we waste about four times more than what Paris does. Just to give you an example in terms of liters per person. So this is, this is the bottom line of all this is that we lack democracy in our planning processes. And uh, we haven't let it out in the, in the open to the market forces to, to decide what to build, where to build, how to build. And we've come down to that point where you now find that you are failing on transport, you're failing on facilities, and you're failing on many other fronts to do with the urban sector. All right, Mr. Hiranandani, come in here to, into this conversation. I mean, land is not scarce, but it's a complete planning failure. And the top-down approach hasn't been working, but private sector has tried to come in, hasn't it? And there's not been that much of success. Let's be honest about it as well. Uh, Manisha, you have to understand there are two aspects of the whole deal. The first of all, the external uh, planning has to be done by the government or local authority. And in the last couple of years, they have miserably, miserably, miserably failed. If you look at the new master plan of Mumbai, it's such a disaster. And it's scary to think that that's going to be what is going to be done by Mumbai for the next 20 years. I mean, I feel horrified when I see it. There's not a single iconic idea. There is no future as far as the planning is concerned. You put a symmetry in the middle of the town, uh, in the centerpiece of a, uh, of a township. You, uh, you know, you, you, you usurp uh, private uh, green spaces which are there belonging to societies. Uh, you have totally, uh, you know, changed the master plan which makes no sense whatsoever. So I think, first of all, you need somebody who really looks at a master plan of cities in a healthy, democratic, and open sort of way. Second, I think the developers owe something to the country and to the city. 
In some respects, some of the developers have done a beautiful job. We've created huge amount of beautiful infrastructure. Uh, for instance, in our township in Pawai, one third of the space is totally green. We have 100 acres of gardens of, uh, and forests. We do, uh, we built the largest sewage recycling plant in India, and we have lots of green buildings. So I think what we need is a mix of government change and private uh, uh, people initiative also to take place. So I think both have actually lost out in this country. Neither has the government really succeeded in what they needed to do or how to do it, nor have the developers, Pan India, really done their job beautifully. So I think uh, we need both to buck up in the next few years and prove to the people of India that we are tru truly committed to making beautiful cities environmentally friendly, sustainable, and actually using public spaces in the right way. But it's a shame. We have really lost out the last 65 years. Pranav Ansel, come in here. So there are two questions we are saying that number one, master plans have been a complete failure. First, we keep raising this whole question and saying so many cities don't even have a master plan. Now we are saying that the current master plans are complete bunkum. They just don't take care of sustainability or a democratized living. On the other hand, we are saying that the government should be responsible for external spaces and the developer should be responsible for internal spaces. How are you placed on both these arguments? You know, I have, a, uh, in addition to what has been said by my fellow panelists, I want to add two more things. In India, I was reading in one of the uh, articles, only 20% mm -hmm. of any city is the 20% of the population lives in townships or projects made by private developers. 80% is, not even it, it's about 20, 25% is government and 50 to 60% is illegal slum developments. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about sustainability and when we talk about green environment or the health concerns, we must also understand that 50 to 60% of the people are living in slums or illegal colonies and then the government comes and most of these illegal colonies are regularized and made legal. So it is actually a big hindrance to the quality of uh, uh, the uh, environment, sustainability and the services that are being mm -hmm. provided. So I think that's an issue that we should address. Let me bring in Tanmay. So we have two developers representing the developer community. Mr. Hiranandani says that I would blame the developers also. Tanmay, come in here. I mean, yes, there are two examples of developers who are doing something. But look at the... Now, we've already... In my opening link, I've said that political structures are incapable of globally, not just in India, of bringing large changes, right? Especially in developing countries. So, so how... Do you think the developers so far have been doing the right thing? And going forward, do you see that intention of actually focusing on great living spaces? <laughs> it's uh, two uh, very different aspects, but the problem has to be, as Manit said, solved from both the ends. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are a few developers, and uh, the Hiranandani project in Pawai is a very good example of that, where there is a, a developer doing something which is creating a great urban space. Uh, but then how many such examples are there? So uh, I would say that such projects are not the norm. They're rather the exception right now. So uh, a, a developer today is doing what is required to meet the minimum environmental conditions. Okay. And some of them mandate certain things that are being done. But as an intent, as a design, as something that gets back into the fabric of the urban living, which goes beyond the boundary of the project, it's very rare to see. Okay. Uh, but again, it's, it's a tough debate because, it, because you cannot blame uh, only the developer in this game because it's also our uh, expectation from a development to be insular, blocked off, and mm. inward looking and having all the amenities and services only for ourselves. We've had this discussion many times that if you walk over to a, any new city, go to a Noida or Gurgaon, you'll have, you said, clubhouses and facilities and gym every 200 meters, but none of them open to anyone outside of that boundary wall. Right. And even then, there's nothing for the community. of. So I would say that there is a concept which is very well known called the smart growth, okay. where the smartness is not just in gadgets and devices and ICT, it's also there, 
but it's the way you design in which the common services, spaces, and the investments that are being made by developers in any case are mm -hmm. leveraged for the greater good. Okay. Now, if we only wait for the government, I, I mean, government has to pitch in because that's where all our tax money is going. We are supposed to be getting those services that we are now lacking. Okay. Uh, and they have to be, uh, the, the, the top-down planning has to accommodate this. But I would say that in a city like Delhi, where our number one, pro I mean, you opened up with the whole problem of air quality, which right. is coming from cars. Why are cars there? Because people are commuting. Why are they commuting so much in Delhi? Because we don't allow mixed use. We don't allow people to work and live in the same neighborhood. Absolutely. It's a planning failure. Just that one change will completely ease out congestion in large parts of the city. Okay. So you have to do it both ways. That means buildings have to be designed that allow for this kind of a mixed use without encroaching on privacy and other issues. And the laws have to permit it as well. Okay, so let's, so we've established the problem and we see and realize that there's a big problem. But there are two big debate points opened up. Number one, should what the developers are making for a community be open for larger public good? Now, this is, this is a really interesting aspect. We've never explored on the property show. Is it feasible and possible in a country of such high disparity like India? That's the first question. The second one, which we need to absolutely come back and discuss is, our cities are already such a big mess. Is there a solution? I mean, can you actually change anything in the next decade or not? Or, or, or have we already lost too much time and the jungle is so messed up that you can't fix it? Come back on this very interesting discussion. How do we have more sustainable homes, living and lives in India's urban cities?